Hi there, I'm Joey. I'm Jacob. And we are watching Star Trek for the first time. Last time on Star Trek, Kirk and Spock had sex. Or, was, well, fight sex anyway. Fight sex. There, there was talk of relief afterwards. So uh, <laughs> I, I, th I think I think it's a pretty accurate descriptor. Draw your own um, conclusions. Yeah. Um, so today we're watching an episode called... I'm gonna butcher this name because I don't know. I don't know. I can't even imagine how I would pronounce it. Because at least with Archons, I was like, it's either Archons or Archons. I'm right about one of these. This is called Who Mourns for Adonai? Adonai? A-D-O-N-A-I-S. Adonai? Adonai, maybe? Adonais? Or do you just drop the A and say Adonis? Like Ado probably Adonis. Like I don't know. I like like this. All this, right, okay. This one's baffling more than Archon. I'm just I'm just gonna say it right here now. Before going into the episode, I'm going with Adonis. Okay, I, I'm going with Adonis, just because I want to be. Um. Anyway, we're about to get into post episode thoughts in a second. Be sure to join us then. We're about to watch Who Mourns for Insert Name Here. So season two was off to a really strong start last episode. Yeah, um, I feel a bit deceived. Yeah, yeah just a little bit. Um, but but I mean, it, this, this is a fine in a, episode. I haven't felt this, like, just eh about an episode in a while, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... Um, um, but there were some things to, to really like in this one. I, I, I had to comment on the directing in this. Uh, Mark Daniels uh, directed this episode, and... Just really strong directing. There's some really effective shots. In yeah, this. yeah. Um, that was one of the stronger aspects of the episode. Uh, again, much like last episode, the new music has been really solid. So, so I've really, really been enjoying that. Yeah, um, I, I very much enjoy the new music. Yeah, but uh, but on the directing in, in, in this episode, there was some really, like I said, there were some really great shots. Um, but I had to laugh about the one uh, that I mentioned to you <laughs> yeah. when uh, when Apollo first be like became big or whatever that he did twice throughout the episode. Right. Um, they did this big like shot, like you know when he when he started. To to, like grow I guess and they like they panned up from like Kirk and McCoy looking up at him yeah and uh, the camera just got higher and I was like well it's actually a really cool shot I like that but I was gonna comment on it until I remembered what that would be leading to which is just a really bad big Apollo effect and just and it just didn't look very good. It was not a very convincing sh uh, shot, no. Yeah. Um, on the supporting cast in this episode, speaking of things that I really liked, I loved uh, Leslie Parrish's performance as uh, Carolyn Palamas. Um, she was just, I, I mean, weird things about her character aside, I just really enjoyed the performance. Oh, yes, the performance was good. Yeah. I don't necessarily, I didn't always necessarily agree or like with the direction, yeah. the direction of her character. Yeah, because her character serves a weird purpose in the episode. She's taken by Apollo pretty early on, and uh, and she supposedly falls in love with him until Kirk, I guess, slaps some sense into her. Right. Not literally, though he may as well have. Right. Um, I mean, she joins the landing party because after Apollo announces himself after holding their ship with a surgical glove, mm -hmm. uh, it's that, you know, she's brought down because Apollo's a uh, as a Greek god, so we need someone yeah. with some ancient earth knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So she, so she like offers up some some Greek mythology advice, whatever. Um, but then she's taken by Apollo. She supposedly falls in love with him. Kirk slaps some sense into her, and she like tricks him. Then she's like, "Oh well, I've just been studying you," and that pisses him off. But then she actually was in love with him, I guess. Yeah, right. Cause there, and she there shows some sympathy for this regret. Greek. She shows sympathy for this Greek god who's been treating her like shit the whole time. Yeah, right. Like, just treating just... everyone like shit the whole time, as Greek gods do. So that was like probably like my biggest just in the episode is that they just kind of made it seem as if like we should have shown sympathy towards this character. No, and Greek just, gods, no. generally speaking, were pieces of crap. Yeah, you don't sympathize with these people, and I think that's that's where I was just sort of apprehensive with a lot of things here. Like, if um, like if we're to assume, as this episode very heavily implies, that the Greek gods, as we understand them today, is how they were. Yeah. They're not worth the kind of worship that the show implies maybe they should have offered a little of. Yeah. Which also, he just is a god. Which, you know, another god just wandering the Star Trek universe, I oh, guess. Oh, not anymore. The, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> but it is kind of funny, because they kind of question it for a while. Uh, Kirk is like, oh, that's not a god. He's very, like, confident in that. But then he just sort of just gives up on his whole thing to disprove Apollo as being an actual god. Right. And they just kind of accept it, which is a little weird. I would um, like to point out, there are a lot of gods in Star Trek that need outside power sources. So many. 
just so, so many. And <laughs> we've only just started the second season, um, which is really funny. Um, Add another god to the god counter. Uh, that's, that's what I'm telling you, man, we have been starved of the, shirt, of the shirtless Shatner count, and there are so many other things we could have been doing. We're I know! Doing. The god counter, for one. The god counter, the, the ripped shirt Shatner, like, come on. Like, there are so many things we could have done, but whatever. Um, Despite my, my apprehension in Apollo's portrayal, though, in this, uh, he had a really great line that he went out on towards the end. Uh, yes. There is no room for gods, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, mm -hmm. And he does kind of learn his lesson in the end. But it's... The portrayal of Palamas was really the issue, I guess, in relation to Apollo. Yeah. Like, if they had her stick to her guns and be like, no, 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 I'm, I don't really feel the sympathy of a lover, more of a... Uh, if nothing else, I felt bad I deceived you. Mm-hmm. Then I'd be more on board with it. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Um, oh, actually, I had another note on the directing here. I just realized that. Um, uh, the green hand effect, which Paramount Plus has the remastered versions of Star Trek TOS, but I'm pretty sure, because I looked it up, I because uh, I looked at like, like, older screenshots because I wanted to see what the original effect was. I think that was just the original effect. I, mean, I think it's a little glowier. Yeah, this, but if it's but, like, not in any significant way. Yeah, yeah. The effect is actually is just a really nice effect, and re really well achieved. Um, we get a bit more Chekhov in this. He, he speaks much more than he yeah. did than he, than he did in a month time. Um, and I, I, I just really like his character actually so far. He, he, he's fun. Mm -hmm. um, we, haven't seen, we haven't seen much of him yet. But, no, uh, I'm sure he'll have episodes to shine. Yeah, yeah. Has magnificent hair though. Yes, well, you did call that I, out. I had to. He's great. Um, and then there was a for a lot of them, so to Spock in charge of the Enterprise. Yeah, him and uh, Ahura did a lot of work together. And actually, I, I had this in my notes too. Uh, Ahura gets a lot of moments to shine throughout this. Mm -hmm. um, just, just some moments of her just like taking charge, you know, and not just like under Spock's command, though she is the whole time. Um, you really just see like, you know, her and Shona is just really getting a chance to shine as a character. Um, it's, it's really nice. And there was a moment where she's trying to bypass uh, some circuitry mm -hmm. and Spock essentially tells her, go faster. And she's like, listen, this is delicate. Let me do it. Let me take my time. Yeah. Because I need to do it right. Yeah. And like yeah. Spock could have so easily gone, no. Yeah. No, no. Instead, he affirms that she's the one who knows what she's doing. Yeah. And he'll just let her get on with it her was, work. Oh, yeah. I love that moment. It was such a good moment. Um, I, I really, actually, those are probably like my favorite scenes in the episode. All those scenes where like Spock was in command of the ship. I just mm -hmm. loved seeing those. Um, uh, and then I guess just two other things that I wanted to comment on here, actually, as we're talking about some of our actors getting a chance to shine here, I wanted to talk about Kirk in this episode because you called it out. I did. I had to write it in my notes that like we have like, I think William Shatner is a good actor. Yes, he, I really do. He's generally speaking a good actor. In Shatner this show. is is pretty infamous for some of his like awkward deliveries at times in, in Star Trek, but I, we haven't seen much of it, honestly. No, at, I, at least nothing that is like to the point of like the exaggerations that like you know the, uh, uh, like shows have like portrayed what Kirk was like, like nothing like that. But this episode, it was the Kirk that you saw in all those things that make fun of him yeah. with all those pauses and he does that even like, in, all the fucking even, time even in like anim even the, the joke in Animaniacs um and the other thing I just wanted to mention was that weird moment on the matter of Kirk where uh, where Apollo like takes it takes charge and, 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 and like um he, he attacks Scotty he like electrifies him and then he makes Kirk lose his voice and then the second Apollo disappears Kirk gets his voice back and none of that means anything I couldn't I was trying to figure that because I've been thinking about it since you called it out Mm -hmm. Um, it's either Apollo was choking him, or he was literally stripping his voice away. Well, not literally, yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more that he was choking him. Okay. Because that, if, if so... Strangling another, him. Another, another, another awkward Shatner acting moment, if that's the case. I want to say, it's, I think it makes more sense that he was trying to strangle Kirk into submission mm -hmm. than make him just losing his voice because of the way he fell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and then I'm actually glad I mentioned that scene now because I, there was one other thing I wanted to mention, which was the funniest aspect of the episode, uh, Scotty in love. Yeah, um, which we're... not not really touched on after, uh, well, because the episode just kind of ends, Yeah, obviously. yeah. But from the first scene of the episode, Scotty's in love with uh, uh, Lieutenant Palamas, and uh, and, and we just get, like, get little moments where like she's taken, up, taken away by Apollo, and Scotty's like really bothered by that, and he's looking after her the whole time. It's just nice to see, and we haven't like seen those more like human emotions from Scotty yet. You know, mm -hmm. Scotty's usually very matter-of-fact and, 
yeah, gets things done. But yeah, um, that was nice to see. And I guess that I don't, I don't think I have anything else in my notes here that I want to uh, talk it, about. And no, because the episode was simultaneously boring. Mm -hmm. with not much going on and while still being interesting in other aspects yeah you know? exactly i think just the script isn't the strongest person no it's a script um, it's a script problem despite giving despite giving a couple actors like like some really great moments to shine by giving them scenes to their own like we mentioned ahura and scotty um those were really nice to see but other than that i think the the strongest aspects of the episode were the performances and um and the direction um, and those were great to see but yeah that's about it um it was okay i guess <laughs> right like it's yeah it's fine uh, be sure to join us next time when we continue Star Trek The Original Series. Until then, this has been Joey Morgan. I'm Jacob. Goodbye.